Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're taking a look at the Castilla again. This is the tier 10 Spanish cruiser. And I had a really, really good game in it that I just had to share with you guys. I really did enjoy this ship in my first impressions when I was looking at this line when it was in early access. It's been out for a little while now in the normal tech tree. Yes, we are citadeling Aegirs at that range. <laughs> Pretty insane. Uh, but I really enjoyed this ship because of its burst fire. That's the gimmick of this line here, where we have this F key that allows us to fire two salvos very, very quickly, and then have a reasonably long reload. It's not too punishing, I've found, which is really nice, uh, and allows this ship to be quite flexible. Its armor piercing is really nice too. You got 254 millimeter guns. Basically, you have Napoli guns on this ship. It's pretty nice, especially considering the dispersion they get, much better than what the Napoli does have. It looks a bit like a Napoli too, but you don't gain that armor advantage that a Napoli would have. No fuel smoke here either, so it's not this overwhelming tanking ship that also happens to have just insane guns. It is still a cruiser, and you're going to have to play it as such. You're not actually going to be tanking a lot of battleship salvos. Although, in this game, we are going to have a lot of potential damage. People are going to be shooting at us quite a bit. And we're going to manage to survive thanks to our maneuverability. I found this ship to be reasonably agile, not uh, insanely so, but it is enough to dodge a lot of incoming fire. Uh, this burst fire is more than just an AP burst. It's really good with high explosive here too. If a ship is going to be leaving your range, or you have a ship that's going behind an island, and they just use their damage control, perhaps you can light a permafire on them, for example. So that price in there, leaving our range, and yet we do get ourselves a fire ticking on them, which is really nice to see. Still playing very cautious here. I found myself dying a lot in this ship when I played it too aggressively. Uh, we're still trying to play that mid-range role, trying to use island cover to block enemy ships from shooting us. Patree on the enemy team is, of course, a very scary ship to deal with, all that overmatch. Uh, is pretty painful here on the Castilla, so we do want to be avoiding that as much as we can. Although I will poke out here. Uh, there is a Yoshino that I would love to land a burst fire in. It's possible I'm a little bit too focused on this burst fire, and I do much better with just using the DPM of the ship, because you do have a small DPM penalty when you are using this burst, but I'm just in it for the big numbers, guys. The white bars, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> so we're going to try it on this Yoshino here, and we just get atrocious dispersion. That is just disgusting to look at, even again. Uh, was not overly happy with that while I was playing the game, certainly. Uh, and even looking back at that, that is just gross. Uh, so unlocked dispersion, unfortunately, in that one. Typically, it's going to be much better than that, but that's always going to be an issue with this game is the aiming bugs that we have to deal with. Shells going short, Ships just not having any sort of lock-on accuracy. It's very, very frustrating, especially in a battleship, uh, but also in a ship like this, where we do want to be landing those alpha strikes, and we have that longer reload uh, during that time. We do get ourselves another Citadel there on some sort of test ship, I guess. Not sure what that thing exactly is about, but it apparently has a Citadel, which is uh, nice to see there, even though we didn't get too much on him. Skipping forward a little bit here, we are going to deal with the enemy's push through the sea cap. You can tell our team is doing a reasonably good job on the A flank. So we're going to set up to receive a push here, trying to get a few crossfires as our team does retreat. And again, going for that burst. Still feeling out how the pen goes here. A Duncan does have a pretty large citadel. And seeing if we can do some damage. And no citadels, unfortunately. So at that range... Either the angle was wrong, we didn't hit the Citadel area, or it was just a little bit too armored. Now we're going to have a little bit of an awkward fight here. Uh, this Duncan, as well as the enemy cruisers pushing up. You can tell I'm very focused on the armor piercing here. I should be using HE into the Duncan, and honestly, into a lot of these cruisers, since the HE is actually pretty good. But they might go broadside, right? <laughs> Uh, a little greedy for uh, these big salvos, but they can happen. They can happen, right? You may as well try, right? So three citadels, uh, citadels there feels pretty good into that Yoshino. Unfortunately, we don't actually end up killing them, um, but it was a very nice salvo anyway. This is a nice ship if you're frustrated with the lack of consistency out of battleships, but you still want to get some of those big hits. Um, but you're more of a cruiser player at heart, and Castilla, I think, is going to do a great job for you then. 
It's honestly one of the better designed tech trees that I've seen for more gaming in quite some time. It just doesn't go down an insane OP rabbit hole or is just incredibly weak. Um, I think this is a really strong line, especially the tier 10 that I've been playing most of all, but isn't OP and it's not really that unfun to fight against. Um, yes, you are going to have to worry about a reasonably stealthy cruiser coming up and dev striking you on your broadside. Um, but you do have to worry about that regardless, I think. Uh, it's always going to be dangerous to sit broadside anyway. So when you're fighting this ship, I do think it's a very interesting ship to fight against, as well as play, which is the sign of a really, really nicely designed ship. I do think the addition of these F keys or these special gimmicks, combat instructions, these sorts of things are probably a little over the top. Uh, we certainly see that with super ships, how a lot of the ones coming into the game nowadays are lacking any sort of special gimmick like that or are just flat out weaker than those initially released ones. Would be interesting to see if Wargaming would nerf some of those a little bit. Uh, looking specifically at Annapolis, Condi, Satsuma, those ones are a little bit extreme. Um, but hey, this line has a pretty nice gimmick and a nice F key that isn't over the top OP, I don't think. Uh, but it is very powerful still, and I like it a lot. So in this one, we are stuck in a very, very awkward position here uh, coming into this late game. We're going to be permanently lit by the Hydro by this Preussen here. We obviously don't want to be walking out against him. Unfortunately, my Torps got broken on the right side, so that's why I wasn't able to Torp him there. And we are stuck broadside on to the Patri at longer ranges, so fortunately, our acceleration there was enough to juke his shot, but we could have easily died there. This ship definitely does have a Citadel that can be hit, especially by something that uh, has that kind of overmatch. Uh, it is definitely a scary thing to deal with. Again, trying to avoid the Proisen still, 30 mil overmatch, something to keep in mind here. I'm going to try and deal with the Yoshino, some of the cruisers. That's really what we want to fight. We can fight battleships, but our HE DPM isn't that great. Neither is the fire chance, um, or at least the fires per minute. The fire chance is actually pretty decent. We just don't have the DPM to really burn down battleships that effectively here. I prefer to focus on the armor piercing side of things. So, of course, fighting other cruisers is the idea. We do have our Torps on the other side though, which is very nice to see. And we're gonna burst into the upper belt of this Preussen and look at this damage. 13K in the first one, I think that was nine and a half in the second one, so we did over 20K uh, to the Preussen there in a burst, which is a pretty good salvo. If you get unlucky in something like a Montana, uh, you're gonna do less than that in a salvo. <laughs> uh, of course, a Monty or something can do up to upwards of 40K, but that's a pretty decent salvo uh, out of a cruiser, as well as the Torps there helping finish off of that price end. So our rear is clear now, and uh, we can now focus on the guys in front of us. Still bow into the Patri here, but uh, really difficult to avoid his shots all the time. We do land two Citadels, though, on whatever this test ship is. And that becomes our high caliber, so up over 200,000 damage. Our potential damage is climbing up there as well, nearly 2 million in this game. And it will go up because we are the most forward ship in our team. And they're going to focus us, try and get us out. Notice the reload now on my first gun. He took out my first gun there as it was reloading from a burst. And we still have to do that full reload. That makes sense, of course. But I'm wondering what's going to happen if your turret gets knocked out and it's not during a burst reload. Is it still going to be that long reload or is it going to be the normal one? Because at the beginning of the game, you have that full long reload like you had just burst fired. I don't know. I'm not sure how that works, but it might be a bit of a pain point here on the Castillo and this line in general. If we are going to have to deal with that, if our turret gets knocked out and we repair it, having that extra long reload, uh, even if we didn't use our burst fire. So we do manage to take out the cruiser and we're still spotted here on such low HP. Uh, trying desperately to go dark, not get lit on fire here. And fortunately, we don't. But we don't have our Hydro up, so dealing with this DD is going to be a little tricky. Burst Fire also amazing for dealing with Destroyers. You can land that really potent Salvo in when the DD is broadside. Um, of course, you do lack a little DPM, but you're not going to get nearly the damage out on a Destroyer once they're able to angle to you again. Uh, so that's where this Burst Fire, especially considering the lack of a punishment, really, for using it. It's only a minor DPM hit. We may as well use our Burst against this DD here. And Venoms are small, but we should get some decent damage. 
And we do, just barely leaving him alive. Uh, we only had 14 shells there. I guess that's a decent hit rate. Um, but if I had led a little bit more, I think hitting that further forward portion of his ship that is a little bigger, we could have actually taken him out there. Still great damage though, up to 230k. And maybe we finish him off here right at the end of the game? No. <laughs> no, we actually do not. <laughs> wasn't particularly happy about that dispersion so whether that was lock on bug or what i don't know but yeah not quite getting us our third kill there but a monster game out of the castilla really really nice damage but also getting that dreadnought as well and i think we got up to 2.8 mil potential damage um uh, pretty decent as for the build here on the castilla i've gone with a pretty reasonable cruiser build i think um, maybe a little bit different. I'm trying to use this outnumbered a little bit more. I have definitely slept on this skill ever since it came out. And I am trying to use it more, especially on these ships where I am a little more focused on the armor piercing side of things. I'm trying to get those dev strike kind of salvos. Didn't really make use of it in this game though. Uh, so maybe it's not as valuable, but I am still trying to see what it's like. So keep in mind, four points is basically being set aside for just testing out what this skill is like. But I do think Top Grade Gunner is going to be excellent on this ship, uh, even though we do have really good concealment. There's still a lot of times where you're going to make use of the extra reload. It's very nice to have. Concealment, though, Superintendent, since we have so many consumables, we do want to be using. Adrenaline Rush is just always pretty much the best Tier 3 skill. I'm not using Heavy AP. I guess that would be some of those points coming back. And I am going for Eye in the Sky, even over things like Party Target, maybe even Demolition Expert. And I really like this skill for giving me that extra flexibility to take a reload mod instead of a range mod. So 17.1 kilometers is not good range at tier 10, not at all. Um, but this skill is allowing me to take that because I have my spotter plane more often. So it's really any situation where I am wanting to have that extra range, typically the spotter plane is gonna be available to me thanks to this skill. Of course, gun feeder is just amazing when you have a ship that does wanna swap between HE and AP, like this one. And then I'm also using the spotter aircraft mod here. Should maybe consider main armaments uh, since we did get, um, well, both our torque tubes, I think were permed by the end of the game. Uh, we did have to deal with that one turret in a bit of an awkward position there. Um, but that does result in this spotter plane being up for 130 seconds and we only have 114 second cooldown. So it's available to us more often than it isn't, which is pretty nice to see. Uh, since it's not like an OP consumable, but very, very useful for taking something like a reload mod here. Still concealment. Propulsion mods certainly helping us out there. I think without propulsion, we probably die to that Patrice salvo uh, when he caught us broadside there. Um, but this is a really good ship, man. I, uh, I really like it. I don't find it to be that OP, but every time I'm playing it, I'm typically having a pretty good time with it. You can tell, though, the armor is uh, not Napoli levels, <laughs> so you do have to be a little more careful. Uh, of those battleships. And I believe if you do go broadside, you are gonna take some pretty big hits. So to me, that's like a really good design cruiser. It, it punishes things relatively consistently. It doesn't have just insane OP armor uh, or some gimmick that just locks out an entire ship class from playing the game, uh, things like that. It's a reasonable ship to play against and it's pretty fun to play. And to me, that's uh, that's some great game design, honestly. Uh, and that's going to do it for, for the Castilla today. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.